Hey everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Music Television. Got a great guest with us right now. As you can see, Tracy Bonham. She's been, uh, you know, nominated for Grammy Awards. She's on tour right now with Blake Morgan. You guys know her from probably one of her most famous songs and videos of all time, Mother Mother. Tracy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, so I know we're we're kind of having to be a little quiet because it's it's late in the household tonight, huh? Yes, yes, yes. All everybody's asleep. Yes, everybody's asleep. But you know, the, the rock star in us is never <laughs> asleep. And uh, so obviously, as we're talking about, you are headed out on the tour trail here with Blake Morgan, and I know you've been selling out shows. How, how's everything going? No, it's 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 great. It's uh, been a really great uh, year for uh, me and just getting back out on the road after not really spending too much time uh, on the road since becoming a mother. And and now it's you know uh, really enjoyable. Every you know six months or so, we we continue the tour. We get out there, we see fans, and I get to play songs from you know twenty plus years ago, and then also new songs. And people are really connecting uh, with the songs, which is really, you know, making me really happy. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. You talk about, like, playing your songs, you know, when they were really, really popular back in the day. And, of course, they're timeless. They're always timeless. But you, you put a different spin on it, like Mother, Mother. You know, I mean, obviously, huge song. You know, I mean, I don't need to tell you. You know, but uh, I went out and I saw an acoustic version of it not too long ago. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how different it feels, you know, when uh -huh. it's performed like that. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the, uh, you put out an album just a couple of years ago, I guess. You know, we're talking about Modern Burdens. Mm -hmm. And that's on there, yeah? Mother, Mother? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's track for track, um, a remake of The Burdens of Being Upright, which is my debut album. Yes. So Mother, Mother was the first track. So I just... I. I, you know, basically followed the, the track listing, but then made all the recordings very different than the original. That's fine. Now, Mother, Mother, I'm just guessing that this came out well before you were actually a mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, about, <laughs> you know, yeah, about, you know, 16, 17 years before becoming a mother, I would say, I now, think. Now, did that end up being a lullaby at all for your... For... <sighs> no, I mean, it's just a funny... Being a mom and also being a daughter... Yeah. And, you know, just the conversation between my mom, who I wrote it for or about, okay. even nowadays, she'll still joke when she says everything's fine. I'm like, OK, mom, ha -ha, I get it. everything's fine. But now, as I'm a mom and she's, you know, grandma, the, the, the relationships are just very, very interesting. And now I get to see how hard it was for her to, you know, for anyone to be a mother. Right. <laughs> and I probably you know, totally took all of that for granted until like the day I became a mother. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you know, this is a lot harder than I thought. And then kind of looking at my son and imagining him moving out of the house and telling me that everything's fine when it isn't, you know, it's, it's just for generations, I guess that's what uh, kids do. They, they don't want their parents to worry about them. They go get into trouble and they're not going to fess up and they're going to try to protect their, you know, their their mothers and also themselves from getting into trouble. Yeah. Now, as a musician, you know, and I, I'm assuming that it's, you know, fairly challenging, more challenging now balancing your personal life and your professional life as a musician, you know, whereas, you know, back in the day, you could throw a little bit more caution to the wind, whereas you got more responsibilities now. Mm. Um but has the evolution of your personal life influenced your music at all? Have you have you found yourself channeling that in your songwriting? Yeah, um, especially lately. Um, I'm just finding that the process is changing as I'm getting older and as I'm, you know, just trying new things um, I feel like I'm a different person now than I was 20 years ago, for sure. Aren't we all? But, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and I think we should, you know, hope that we have evolve and we grow and we change. Right. Um, but I I do hear it in my music, and I also see it in the process. I it's hard for me to go back to, you know, early 90s when I was writing some of my first songs, really, mm -hmm. and try to 
get back into that mindset of, you know, the way I was writing and the way I wanted to be portrayed. Of course, I had a lot to prove at that time, too. Completely different uh, process. Now I feel I feel a little bit more like it can be more flowy and I can kind of relax. And sometimes I even write like um, almost like stream of consciousness. And I would have never done that 20 years ago. That would have been like too like, whoa. Right. Did, you know. Right. Now, I know you're also a very accomplished violinist and pianist. So for everyone out there, again, we are here with Tracy Bonham. Make sure you go <laughs> check her out online. Just Google her. You know, she's the Google. only one out there. She's the only one. And, uh, you know, she's got some great music. Uh, the fact that, you know, you do play the violin and the piano as well, it seems like those uh, instrumental talents are more infused into your work you're doing now versus what you were doing, you know, a couple decades ago, you know, where you were more predominantly the vocalist. Uh, mm -hmm. Would that be accurate? And, you know, if that is accurate, mm -hmm. why would you say that your instrumental, uh, you know, skills are more featured in the music you make now versus when you first started out? Okay. Um, by the way, this is Steve. Um, I, you know, 20 something years ago when I was first writing songs, a lot of my songs at that time were a reaction to my kind of strict classical upbringing. Okay. And it was a little bit of it, like thumbing my nose at it. So I kind of dared myself to write, you know, a, a three chord rock song that was, you know, um, you know, st stripped of any kind of sophistication whatsoever okay. as a joke, like thumbing my nose. And so I chose not to play too much violin. I chose, I definitely chose not to play in piano. Of course it was the nineties too. So like, you know, you weren't seeing a lot of, um, you know, like early nineties, you know, it wasn't really about the piano. So, right, right, right. um, it was of a time and of a genre that I just kind of stayed in this, I was really experimenting. So I was listening to bands like the Pixies and, you know, the Buzzcocks or, or whoever. And, and that was how I was feeling at the time. So I was writing songs based in that kind of arrangement. And then later on, uh, I started to fill in the gaps with my, you know, the other instruments that I'd learned how to play. Mm -hmm. And also I just became a little bit less precious about things and more like, well, this is who I am and this is me. And I want to, you know, kind of, I just want to like explore other sides of me and not have to be in a box. Very and cool. also early nineties, I think that I suffered a little bit from that, like, you know, being in a box, you know, not allowing myself to try new things because I thought it was supposed to be a certain way. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. That was such an interesting era because, you know, I look at, you know, the prominent females of that era, of which clearly you're one of them. You, know, you had like, you know, Fiona Apple, you had right. Alanis Morissette, you know, you had these women that were really peers of yours. And I see what you're saying. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of that style of music, it, mm -hmm. I don't want to say that it was necessarily boxed, but there was definitely a a style, a theme. Well, I, I mean, it was the grunge era, right? You know, so I mean, it was just part of that whole mm. uptick, you know, mm. this new changeover from what you had in the 80s with like that real hardcore, you know, pop, you know, and you had Madonna and then you had all the, you know, glam metal and everything like that. So I definitely see what you're saying as far as that evolution. But here we are today. And you're out on the tour trail with Blake Morgan. And I've just been reading and, and hearing amazing reviews, uh, just uh, the response that you're getting from your crowd. Again, you know, we're talking about sellout crowds and the chemistry, you know, that you have, you know, with Blake when you're out there playing, performing your music. How, how did that all come about? Hmm. Um, well, let's see. Blake and I have known each other for about a year and a half now. That's okay. it. Okay. And he has a, a residency in New York City, um, and he invites uh, artists to come and be a guest and perform with him each month. Um, and uh, he reached out to me about two years ago, and, and uh, I 
I hadn't heard of him, but I, I, you know, kind of did some research. I really liked him and I liked what I saw. I liked what I heard. I just liked the way he approached me and it seemed, you know, and I, I really loved the venue he was playing at. So it seemed like a very, you know, cool thing to do. And we started rehearsing because um, the way he um, orchestrates it is that he has the guest come and play on his music and then like, we'll do some of my stuff. And so we had a rehearsal and from that first day, we became very fast friends. We have a lot in common. He's classically trained. And then he, you know, kind of turned to the dark side as well. And, you know, <laughs> started playing, you know, um, writing, you know, uh, alternative rock, you know, heavy, you know, big uh, rock songs. And he got a big record deal in the 90s as well. And then, um, you know, for various reasons, especially uh, with the music business changing in front of our eyes, you know, right. he was also quite dismayed after, uh, you know, a record release. And um, we just we just hit it off. And so he's also a very good business person and he has a record label. And we got to talking and he was asking me questions about, you know, what was going on with me and all of my past, you know, albums and my catalog. And, you know, I it's funny, but I, I just kind of thought, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess they're being sold somewhere, but I don't know who's selling them or making money. And he you know, basically like helped me kind of take back my catalog. And um, so now on his label, he's like re-released my back catalog, which is really nice to have it in one place. Sweet. Yeah, it feels really great. And so uh, that's one thing that, that we're doing together. And then he's an artist as well. So we decided to uh, tour together as well. So this will be our fourth tour, I think, in the last year, year and a half. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Now, in terms of like, you know, proximity, I know that, you know, you're up there in New York and mm -hmm. tomorrow you'll be in my backyard in Philadelphia. <laughs> um, are we looking at more like national kind of touring? Are you going to be? Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to head down from Philly to D.C. to Charlotte to Atlanta then unfortunately we're going to bypass Nashville, which sucks because I'd really love Nashville. I know it stinks. Right. Music don't, city. Come on. Don't even. And then we're going to go from Atlanta all the way up to St. Paul. Cause that okay. makes sense. Right on. And yeah, right. Uh, sure. yeah, but we've got like two and a half days to get there. Okay. And then we'll do Chicago, uh, Detroit, and then back to Boston and then uh, back home to New York. Right on. But yeah, unfortunately no Nashville. Right on. Okay. Yeah, well, next, next time. time. Next mm -hmm. time. Next so, time. what does the future hold for Tracy Bonham and music? I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> are, are we looking at uh, a lot of new material that we're going to be putting out? Can we look to see that rocker chick that we knew back in the '90s? Is any of that going to be coming back, or are we embracing more of the mature classical side now? Oh, it hasn't gone anywhere. That's the thing. Is that it's, you know, there's all sides of me, and you never know what you can get. But um, I think I'd like to, I'd like to think of it as like it's all, you know, incorporated now. It's like I'm mm. yes, I'm older and more grown up, and you know, maybe a little bit more sophisticated. More, uh, yeah. sophisticated but no, I still like to, uh, you know, you know, there's there's still a fire, there's still uh, a little bit of a rebel, you know, yeah. and you know. Um, I really, I still like to play guitar, but I play violin and, and a little, a lot more piano now. Yeah. Uh, and, but I like to experiment and, and try and see if these songs, especially the older ones stand up no matter what instrument I'm playing them on. And, and so far so good, they stand up and yeah. they, they translate very well. Uh, but as far as the future and new music, I've got a ton, um, of stuff in the well and um, kind of on deck. And I'm trying to figure out which one comes next. Um, I definitely have another album uh, in the works. I'm still writing it, but I'm really, really happy with the songs. And I'll be playing new songs on these uh, shows. I also have a storybook um, similar to like a Peter and the Wolf idea where it's like a musical storybook oh, right on. Uh, for kids, but it's also for like, you know, music lovers of all ages. Cool. Um, and I'm very excited about that because that's almost finished. It's called As the Crow Flies. And then I also have another, um, I'll call it a project, but it's um, songs. I've got a ton of songs that I've recorded and they're just kind of waiting to come out into the world that are um, 
very much like Schoolhouse Rock, but instead of it being about politics or grammar, it's about um, music education, like fundamentals of music. Oh, sweet. Very yeah, cool. it's really fun. And so that's going to, um, I think this is going to become a new, uh, really new uh, a fun endeavor for me, which has to do with education, has to do with, I'll just say music enthusiasts of all ages, because again, I don't want it to just sound like it's a kid's thing. I think it's for all ages, right on. Um, for people who love music like I do. Very cool, very cool. Now, are you active on social media? Where can everyone go to check out what you've got going on? Website, you Twitter? Are you are you one of those tweeters? You know, or you got Instagram? I, I have all of it. I have the Instagram and the Facebook and the Twitter and stuff. Uh, and you will see I have, you know, presence on, on all of those. But um, okay. I'm not the person that talks about, you know, what I had for breakfast and also <laughs> what my cat's doing or even I don't even tend to really get into, you know, my opinions and politics and stuff. I just find that there's enough people out there making a lot of noise. And, and I have, you know, I, I would rather talk with friends not not no offense to anybody who's following me but it's like i'd like to see somebody's face in order to have like a real conversation with someone right isn't this nice right? yeah, yeah it's, it's a weird era better than just a phone call you know yeah and let, so many people are just tweeting and then they just let it go out into the world they don't even know who they're talking to they're just talking to themselves i know and I, I just yeah it's not really me i know so uh website wise um TracyBottom.com. TracyBottom.com. All right. Mm -hmm. So everybody, just go out there, yep. check it out. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and whether she gets back to you or not, that's her prerogative. <laughs> don't Facebook message me. Yeah, don't, don't, don't Facebook message her. Tracy, do thank you so much. It has been a blast talking to you. And, uh, you know, even though I may not be able to catch up with you in Philadelphia tomorrow, maybe I can catch up with you somewhere else along the tour, tour trail. And right. uh, if not this one, definitely another one, because I okay. would love to catch up with you. You got it. Tracy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. All right. I'm hungry. I'm dirty. I'm losing.